Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars, welcome to another PlayStation review. Today I'm taking a look at Planet Zoo on the PlayStation 5. Now this is brought to us by Frontier, who are no strangers to the type of games. They brought us the Jurassic World Evolution games. Um, and essentially, this game is those games just not with dinosaurs and that's me kind of simplifying it i know but if you have played the jurassic world evolution games and you enjoyed them and i have covered both those games on this channel then you know what you're getting into with this game and what you're getting into is a highly polished um and some would argue as well quite educational um fun relaxed game and it's a Obviously, it speaks for itself. It's like a management sim. Uh, you are kind of uh, managing zoos, managing the animals, managing the parks, the businesses, all that kind of stuff. It's it's kind of what you're used to if you play these sort of games. But, you know, it's a management sim at the end of the day. Now, when you first put this game on, uh, it does give you quite a few options to play it. Um, you've got things like your career mode, which acts initially as the tutorial is like um, you do a few different levels in different locations different zoos around the world and it kind of teaches you the basic mechanics of how to kind of um, look after animals how to build their habitats how to make sure they're fed properly how to make sure they're looked after properly how to manage the park so on and so forth now i have to say i found the career mode probably at the minute the most rewarding because it kind of um it feels different some some levels you go into and it, you've, you're given certain tasks to do and to get through the career mode you've got like bronze silver and gold now if you're if you get the bronze medal that will unlock the next stage if you like but if you want to go on and get the silver and the gold medals in these levels then you've got certain tasks that it will give you to do um that you've got to kind of uh, tick the boxes to make sure you do them to get to get all the medals in each uh, but you don't have to. If, if you get the bronze medal and you're not particularly enjoying that level on the career mode, you can come out of that and move on to the next level. And I found it really quite fun and rewarding because sometimes you'll be in like um, an African location. You'll be looking after, you know, some of the creatures that you get in Africa. Sometimes you'll be in um, like... Um, Japanese kind of enclosure looking after pandas other times you'll be in like a really snowy location and you're looking after um, animals you know that are great for that kind of environment and it works really well I think it's a really good introduction to the game the career mode um, and it does actually give you um, a really good intro into the game now but obviously you've not just got the career mode even though that's quite extensive and you can get a lot out of it because you've even got you could choose to be easy medium or hard on these levels on the career mode as well to kind of make it a bit more challenging now as always i always recommend that you start on the easy level so that you learn the mechanics of the game and then continuing on you can kind of choose your difficulty level going on from that so after your career mode, or if you want to do something else instead of the career mode first, you've got like timed scenarios. So it'll give you a scenario and you've got a certain amount of time to complete that scenario. I've not put a lot of time into this one. Uh, it's not really my sort of thing, these scenarios and then having it timed the clock against you. I like to kind of chill out with these games. I don't like a deadline sort of thing or a clock running against me. You've got challenge mode, kind of speaks for itself. It gives you certain challenges that you've got to do. Um, you've got the sandbox mode, again, speaks for itself. You can build from scratch with very few restrictions and you can kind of accommodate the game how you want it. And then there's the franchise mode as well, where you can actually, this is like their version of an online mode, if you like, where you can kind of trade your animals online with other players and stuff. Um, again, I've not put an awful lot of time into that. I do intend to eventually. Once I've fully completed and done all the other modes that I'm happy with, I'm going to have a go with franchise mode. Um, and it's pretty good. And another thing that this game has as well, um, it's got a really cool kind of section where you can kind of download like it's almost like community creations in the WWE games. You know, you've got 
people out there that create some really cool stuff, like whether it be shops, whether it be habitats for your animals, things like that. So if you don't want to spend the time in the game creating them from scratch and it's a bit of a headache to you, you can always go to the workshop, they call it, and you can download player creations. Now, some of them it's restricted because it will require you to have some of the DLC. Um, now, I haven't bought any of the DLC for this game yet. I never do initially, but if I really get into these games, then I sometimes will splash out on the DLC, especially when the price drops. Um, so just be aware that you can't download all the things in the workshop if you don't have all the DLC, but a good portion of them that you can. And, it, and it, they're all set up for you, like the habitats and stuff. It works really quite well. Um, so you've got that. You've got your community creations, if you like, your workshop mode. You've got all these other modes to go into the game, and they're all just as fun as each other for the most part, depending on what your tastes are for this type of game. So you'll kind of go in then, you'll start building your parks or sometimes depending on the mode, if it's career mode, your park might already be partially built and then you're given certain tasks to do, uh, like um, put a few more creatures, you know, animals um, into the park um, or put a few ex exhibitions up. So you've got a few different ways of doing it. You set up your habitats and then you go to like the animal market and you see what animals are available on the animal market and depending on how much money you've got uh, you can then kind of adopt them and transfer them into your zoo now initially it does make sense rather than just transferring them straight into the zoo you've got it makes sense to put them in quarantine first um, to make sure that they don't have any diseases or anything like that um, and then once they've passed quarantine, you can move them into their habitats. Now, you have to make sure as well, and this is very important when you're playing the game, you have to make sure that the habitats meet the exacting standards of the animal that is within that habitat. Some, some animals prefer different temperatures to others. Some of them like to be stimulated. Um, so you've got to kind of... Uh, rather than just put trays of food in there, you've got to kind of make it a bit of a game. Some of the foods you can kind of, you know, put put some meat and stuff inside frozen um, things, or you know, you could you could put like climbing frames in there, depending on the creature, or balls for them to play with. So you've got to kind of keep them stimulated. You've got to make sure the right plant life and things are in that habitat that they can kind of work with um, and it will tell you you can t you can click on any animal within the parks um, and it'll tell you you know how they're feeling basically what's wrong is there any is there a problem or they're not happy with the temperature they're not happy with the social aspect they might want more animals in the habitat with them so they can socialize they might want different plant life in there that you know there's all these sort of things you've got to consider you to make sure um, that everything is great in the habitats and then you've got to make it educational for your guests so you've got to put like um, educational display stands outside that will kind of give them information on the animals you can even put speakers up that will talk about the animals you could put donation stands up for the guests to make donations as well as obviously paying the ticket prices in and then on top of all that, you've got all the businesses as well that you want that you would put into these kind of zoos. So you've got like your, your burger bars and your drink bars and your restaurants and your merchandise stalls. Uh, and then you've got to think about hiring all the staff that you need. So you need you need vets, you need mechanics, you need caretakers, um, so on and so forth. You've got a whole list of things that you need to do. And you've got to keep an eye on your guests' happiness. You know, you can click on the guests and see what they're doing, or what are they happy about, what are they unhappy about, and tailor the park to meet their needs. And then on top of that, you have to kind of do research too. So you can research uh, things in your park, like different um, stalls to add, different things for your guests, for your staff, all this kind of stuff. But also you can you can research um, different the animals that you've got in your park, so that you learn more about them, so that you can tailor um, their habitats to meet their needs even better than before. You can even research different diseases so that you know what to do if there's an outbreak within your park. Um, so all of that works really, really well. Um, so 
it's a really fun game, I'm not going to lie. I, I love these sort of games because there's such a chilled out and relaxed experience. Um, there's no real pressure or stress playing them. You can play it at your pace. It's one of those games that you can pause, you can speed it up if you want. Um, you can take your time, you can click on any animal, you can go to camera mode and just watch them mill, you know, mull around the place for a while. Um, it's a really fun experience, and I have to say, I am quite impressed with this game. Um, there's, like in the Jurassic World Evolution games, you know, you had added, added pressure in those games where the dinosaurs would break out and you had to capture them, and it all got, it could get a little bit um, intense occasionally, that game. Even though there are examples of animals breaking out in this, you know, it, it, it makes it quite easy because what you essentially do is you kind of box up all the animals that are in the habitat and then you go out and find the animal that's escaped and um, they get back into the pens really quickly and then you build up the barricades. But it, it, it's actually a fairly rare event, I would suggest. I think the game looks really quite beautiful. Um, I think Frontier do these games really, really well. It does feel a bit kiddified sometimes. You've got uh, the guy that you can see there on the screen introducing you to each section in the career mode, and some of the dialogue is really cringy and a bit childish. Um, but you, you could argue that this is a game that you could easily target towards a younger audience because I actually think it's really quite educational. There's loads of different information about all the different animals and there's loads for people to learn who are interested in these sort of animals. So um, I have to say I'm quite enjoying this game. It's really high production values and if you like these sort of games it's a strong recommendation from me so i hope you enjoyed checking out this review guys thank you very much for joining i will of course be back with plenty more reviews and content on the channel very very soon